Have you ever heard of Norbert Bolke, the man who managed to elude justice for decades? This is the intriguing tale of a man whose name may not ring a bell, but whose story is a chilling testament to the darker side of human nature. Norbert Bolke, a seemingly ordinary man with an extraordinarily sinister secret. Bolka, a name that would come to haunt the annals of true crime, was once just another face in the crowd. His early life was marked by an unremarkable childhood and a series of mundane jobs. He was the neighbor you'd greet in passing, the colleague you'd exchange small talk with during lunch breaks. But beneath the facade of normalcy, Bolke was a man shrouded in enigma. His crimes, as heinous as they were, remained a mystery for years. The authorities were always one step behind, grappling with a maze of deceit and misdirection. Victims vanished without a trace, their last known contact being the unassuming Volka. Yet, every time suspicion loomed, he managed to slip through the cracks, his inconspicuous persona serving as the perfect smokescreen. The baffling question was, how did such an average individual manage to orchestrate a series of horrific crimes while maintaining the illusion of a normal life? What drove him to this dark path, and how did he manage to evade capture for so long? The answers to these questions lie in the intricate web of Bolke's life. In his story, the mundane details of his early life take on a chilling significance. The innocuous neighbor, the friendly co-worker, were but roles in a grand, macabre performance. His life was a well-rehearsed act, a deceiving play of shadows and light, where the ordinary concealed the extraordinary and the benign masked the malevolent. But who was this man before he became a name synonymous with fear and mystery? As we delve deeper into the enigma of Norbert Bolke, we will attempt to unravel the paradox that is this man piecing together the puzzle of his life, and perhaps in the process, shed light on one of the darkest chapters in true crime history. Born into a seemingly normal life, Norbert Bolke was an average child with an average upbringing. The second of three children, Norbert was born into the heart of a middle-class family in the quiet suburbs. His father, a hard-working factory worker, and his mother, a devoted homemaker, provided a stable environment for young Norbert and his siblings. Norbert's early life was filled with the typical trappings of childhood, school, friends, hobbies, and family outings. He was an average student, neither particularly outstanding nor lagging behind his peers. His teachers described him as a quiet child, perhaps a bit introverted, but otherwise unremarkable. His hobbies, too, were those of an ordinary boy. He loved to play soccer, to go biking with his friends, and to lose himself in comic books and adventure novels. Yet, there was always something a bit off about Norbert. He had a fascination with insects, often seen studying them with an intensity that was unusual for a child his age. He was also known for his temper, which could flare up suddenly and intensely over the smallest of issues. As Norbert grew into his teenage years, this temper became more pronounced. Incidents of schoolyard fights and confrontations with authority figures began to stain his otherwise ordinary life. But these were dismissed as typical teenage rebellion, nothing to suggest the dark path Norbert was soon to tread. And then there were the pets. Neighborhood pets started disappearing, only to be found days later, lifeless and showing signs of foul play. Suspicion fell on several kids in the neighborhood, but no one could ever pin it on Norbert. He was smart, too smart, always staying one step ahead of blame. These early signs, these subtle hints of the monster he would become, were overlooked, dismissed, or explained away. After all, how could this average boy, from an average family, in an average town, harbor such darkness within him? Little did anyone know, this ordinary boy would grow up to be one of the most notorious criminals of his time. As an adult, Norbert Bolke embarked on a spree of criminal activities that shook the nation. His criminal endeavors were not mere acts of petty theft or mindless violence. They were meticulously planned and executed with a chilling precision that would become his grim signature. Bolke's crimes were marked by a haunting pattern. His victims were always single, middle-aged women living alone, they were targeted in their homes during the quiet hours of the night. Each crime scene was left disturbingly pristine, a testament to Bolka's methodical nature and his obsession with leaving no trace behind. 
His first known crime occurred in the small town of Heidenheim in the late spring of 1989. The victim, a local librarian named Hilda, was found in her home, having met a tragic end. This was just the beginning of a crime spree that would terrorize the nation for over a decade. As Bulky's confidence grew, so did the audacity of his crimes. He began operating in larger cities, leaving a trail of victims that puzzled investigators. Despite the similarities in the cases, the authorities were always one step behind. The elusive Bulky was like a phantom, always disappearing before he could be caught. He managed to evade capture for so long due to his keen understanding of police procedures and forensics. He left no fingerprints, no DNA, no definitive evidence that could link him to his crimes. His careful planning and execution allowed him to slip through the hands of law enforcement time and time again. The country lived in fear as Bulky's crimes continued, each one more daring than the last. It seemed as though he was untouchable, an invisible force that struck when least expected. Despite his growing notoriety, Bolka remained a ghost, always one step ahead of the law. The reign of terror finally ended when Norbert Bolke was captured and brought to justice. The capture of Bolka, a notorious serial killer, marked the end of a horrifying chapter in criminal history. The manhunt that led to his apprehension was as intense as it was relentless, with law enforcement agencies leaving no stone unturned. The breakthrough came when a piece of evidence, previously overlooked, was re-evaluated. This led the investigators to a secluded cabin in the woods, where Bulky was hiding. He was arrested without a struggle, seemingly resigned to his fate. The trial that followed was a spectacle that drew the attention of the world. The courtroom was packed with journalists, eager to report on every detail of the proceedings. The evidence presented was overwhelming. Forensic reports, witness testimonies, and the chilling details of Bulky's confessions painted a grim picture of his crimes. The prosecution presented a watertight case, underscoring the gruesome nature of Bulke's actions. The defense, on the other hand, attempted to argue insanity, a plea that was quickly dismissed by the jury. After a grueling three-week trial, the jury reached a unanimous verdict, guilty as charged. The public and media reaction during the trial was a mix of horror and relief. Horror at the gruesome details that emerged about Bulky's crimes, and relief that the man responsible was finally behind bars. Bulky's capture and conviction were seen as a triumph of justice. Yet, the sense of victory was tinged with a chilling realization that such evil could live among us, undetected for so long. The capture of Norbert Bulky brought relief but also left a chilling legacy that continues to haunt. His story serves as a stark reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath the surface, a narrative that continues to captivate and horrify in equal measure. Norbert Bolke's story did not end with his capture. His legacy continues to both fascinate and horrify. The shockwaves of his crimes still reverberate through the lives of those he left behind. The families of his victims, forever changed, had to grapple with a heartbreak that would never fully heal. Their stories became a tragic testament to the loss and grief that Bulky's heinous acts wrought. The community was shaken as well, forever stripped of the illusion of safety. The shock of Bulka's crimes fostered a newfound vigilance, a collective awareness that would change the fabric of the neighborhood. It was a stark reminder that even within the most mundane corners of our world, evil can lurk. In the aftermath of this chilling chapter, law enforcement practices saw significant changes. Bulk's case highlighted the need for advanced investigative techniques, ushering in an era of modernized crime-solving approaches. His capture became a catalyst for change, prompting a re-evaluation of protocol and the adoption of more sophisticated methods. Yet, despite the horror and pain, the public's fascination with Norbert Bulke's story remained. His tale became a grim fascination, a morbid curiosity that fed true crime documentaries and novels. His life, his crimes, and his capture became the stuff of legend, a horrifying narrative that continues to captivate audiences worldwide. He became a symbol of the darkness that can reside in the human heart, a chilling reminder of the capacity for evil that can hide behind the most ordinary of faces. His story, while tragic and terrifying, became a lesson in vigilance, a call for justice, 
and a testament to the resilience of those who survived his reign of terror. Norbert Bolke, a name that remains a chilling reminder of the darkness that can lurk beneath an ordinary facade. His legacy, a haunting echo of a twisted mind, continues to reverberate through the annals of true crime history, a grim reminder of the monsters that can walk among us.